Hey, my name is Kevin Gordon. I have a short documentary, No Wine Left Behind, that's screening here at the Slam Dance Film Festival. It's about a group of Iraq war vets who are setting out to conquer the wine industry. Yeah, well, you know, I really wanted to do a piece about vets. I was shocked by news reports about the situation facing vets transitioning back to civilian life. I mean, the statistics on suicides exceeding combat deaths um, and the fact that the unemployment rate among young vets is uh, over like 25 percent. Um, it's just unbelievable, and all the news stories about it were totally just depicting vets as victims. So I really wanted to do a piece that gave a more positive twist on it, and that was focusing on vets helping vets and taking control of their own situation. Um, so I started looking at vets who started rock bands, and then found a group of vets who'd become organic farmers. And then uh, through them, I heard about this group of Marines in the East Bay who were starting their own winery. So then I went and checked that out. Um, they were, well, first of all, they were busy as heck, so it took forever to finally connect with them. I had to corner them at an event that I knew they were going to be at to, like, finally get their attention. Um, but then, yeah, I think they had had some negative experiences with the media because a lot of vets are, go to the one community college near them, and news crews would just show up all the time and shove a camera in their face and basically ask them, you know, what was the war like? How traumatized are you? Um, but once I told them what I wanted to do and the angle that I was going to take, then they were totally on board. Yeah, you know, the trade secrets never crossed my mind. Um, but I definitely thought about uh, just their image in general and how, you know, any image, any person in a documentary are always handy control their image a little bit over to the filmmaker. But for a business, it seemed like they'd be especially cautious. But um, yeah, no, they were totally fine. Like, um, after that first conversation, it was like hands off and they let me do whatever I wanted to do. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, obviously the war, the films ultimately... I did consider at one point having a section that would deal with the war, because in fact, uh, the subject of the film has a lot of footage that he shot, or met guys in his unit shot while they were over in Iraq. And I went through all that, as well as all of his photographs, but um, overall, I just didn't feel like any of that really did justice to the experience. Like, the footage that they had just wouldn't convey what that was really like for them. Um, and rather than do that part poorly, I decided to just focus on what the film was really about, which is about the present, about what it's like coming home. Um, so the section, actually, where they deal with the past is uh, very brief. Um, and then it's mostly about what coming home is like. Um, well, I guess there's two questions there. One is, was there a political angle? And I'd say the answer is definitely no. I wanted the film to be apolitical. It, I mean, whether you're for the war or against the war, everyone should be for helping these guys come back because they've made a huge sacrifice for this country and they're getting let down now when they come home. You know, they were promised jobs when they came back and there are no jobs waiting for them. And uh, um, so to me, that's an apolitical message that left or right, everyone should be on board with. Um, as far as my own views about the war, yeah, I, that never came up. I deliberately av avoided that because I know I have a different opinion from them, but um, it really didn't affect our relationship because we were both on, on point with the message about vets. Yeah, every vet I met had a story and one that he wanted to share. Um, everyone had their, had their you know, red lines. Like, I think uh, not everybody was ready to actually talk about their wartime experience. But that wasn't, you know, the focus of my interviewing anyway. So uh, it really wasn't a problem. I think people overall were grateful and, you know, really wanted the word to get out about what's happening to vets. Yeah, well, you know, this is just the start of its festival run. Um, but we feel the film's really important for two audiences. One is a general audience, because I think people overall still aren't aware of the challenges facing vets coming home, and there really is a need for more public support for greater help for vets. And then the other audience is vets themselves, because you know, most vets come home, and they aren't lucky enough to have something like the winery nearby. So a lot of them are isolated. They have no sense of camaraderie, no sense of like purpose in their life. And I think for them, it's really inspiring to see something like this. So we're <laughs> trying to get vets um, out to the screenings. Um, but the other component is that we are going to be sending out free copies of the films to about 300 veterans groups. Um, so we want to get uh, the film integrated into their own you know, workshops and training and classes and meetings um, so it can you know, encourage other guys to team up and, and you know, overcome their problems together. Yeah, I mean, at its most basic it's a vet run business um entirely employing other vets and uh and that markets itself as such and i think that will be a really successful model over the country and i know there are other examples um i know there's people trying to do it in like uh solar install uh solar installation and like in the green sector and uh, i think there's restaurants and other like food related businesses doing it so yeah i think it definitely could work for people i mean they definitely have a unique magic 
there, but I, I think uh, similar things would work elsewhere. Yeah. Well, they, they kind of joke amongst themselves. They call themselves the YouTube winery because uh, they actually learned a lot starting out by watching YouTube videos or just reading basic information online and uh, did a lot of experimentation and making, they started off making small batches in the back of an abandoned school bus um, and learned a lot very quickly. And then they also started to enroll in viticulture classes at uh, the local community college. Um, so then, you know, the learning got to the next level. So, but, you know, only a few guys really need to know that aspect. And then most of the work is field work, you know? And that's perfect for someone who's straight out of the military. Like, you know, it's long days, it's repetitive work, it's uh, very clear what you have to do. Um, and then what's, what you've accomplished each day at the end of every day is very clear. So, you know, pruning, pressing, bottling, it's all, it's all hard work that uh, the guys enjoy doing. Yeah, uh, if they want to find out more about the film, they should go to nowineleftbehindfilm.com. Uh, we're also on Facebook, No Wine Left Behind. And the winery itself is on Facebook. It's Lavish Lanes Winery, L-A-I-N-E-S. And they're also at lavishlaneswinery.com.